you think about Burroughs' life, his grandfather invents a counting machine and he's set. Would you all like to see exactly what Burroughs has to be proud of? He has an allowance and he makes the most of it. He has a good time. Stop at random and cut in a phrase. He spends a great deal of time getting addicted to morphine and traveling and stuff like that. Uh, he gets married and divorced, but he doesn't appear to have a serious direction. His common-law wife, Joan, and he are in Mexico, and he shoots her in a drunken game of William Tell. Ultimately, he uh, leaves Mexico and is uh, convicted in absentia and is, uh, you know, has a two-year suspended sentence or something like that. Which seems awfully lenient, like he got away with murder. But I think Burroughs would say he didn't get away with anything because Silver Arrow through the night. His view was that he was being possessed. Yes. Hello. Yes. Hello. Yes. Hello. Yes. Hello. Yes. Hello. Reinforcements, yes. identity, Hello. and passports are yes. Hello. Yes. Hello. Your cool hand is a naked dollar. And that he spent all these years of his life trying to escape that possession. And even when he felt he was escaping it, it was always just around the corner, not quite escaped. He hasn't quite removed it from his life. To the point where he eventually tries to have it exercised. It's a picture to a fellow agent and say, yeah. And I think that's key in understanding his interest in the occult, much of his work, because possession's about a loss of control. And he's feeling for once in his life that he can't escape it. Look at that picture. Oh. Daddy's money isn't good enough. Good, it seemed to be persisting. Something is controlling him. And it's also when he realizes that he's a, going to be a writer. Good, how does it seem to you now? He really has no choice but to be a writer. And his view of it was he had to write because it was through writing that he could escape. Exactly. He was writing his way out of it. Lobo has the future, a fine, vigorous pig. This is magic. This is spell work with words. A very long, many-year incantation. Even his other experiments involve breaking up perception by blood whom I created and attacking the perceived reality as a magician trying to control their universe. Speaking voices, crackling paper without names, went out and greened Where are we now? Then, 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 took a scissors and cut face. Through words, or through images, or through sound, he was doing that. And it all stems from this moment of feeling possessed, feeling controlled, and trying to get that control back. He's writing himself out of possession. Yes, hello. He's trying to gain control. He's feverishly doing this drug-induced, creative, destructive, chaotic, yet life-creating, because you're creating something new out of this chaos, out of this destructive cut-up process. And he's a mess, too. How is this escaping possession? My opinion, it's not that dissimilar than a willful disruption of one's senses. Gentlemen. This is operational even to the cucumbers. Breaking up the habit, the pattern, the rigidity of a learned consciousness and seeing what, if you destroy that, what the consciousness becomes. Something that's not predicted, something that you haven't kept telling yourself is reality. He's destroying himself and destroying his reality. The random terror attack. Gas bombs are often more effective than explosives. And something comes out of that. It's very initiatory. It's an annihilation. It's a shaking up of the etch -a sketch of your consciousness so that something else can be there. It's breaking down the walls of the temple so that it can be rebuilt a new way. It's burning down the tower and then uh, building it up again. And 
it's very destructive. Who will start planting bombs <coughs> on playing just for Charlie? And it could have killed him. Where are we now? As he said, language is a virus. Words are the things that we say and we hear and we read and our brain says that's a real thing. Johnson addressing a meeting of editorial cartoonists at the White House. Ruth held three maids at gunpoint. But it's a construct. He destroyed the construct. I rub out all the words, Henry. A new construct it has to be built so that we can have something to perceive, but what is replaced then? I'd like to think he eventually was feeling like he was getting control of whatever the demon he felt was possessing him. He had said in a few places, um, people keep trying to tell me that it's like a psychological thing and it's inside me, uh, but um, you know, I don't know why people can't accept the idea that maybe it is outside me, and what's the difference between inside me and outside me anyway? After all, he's been a medium all his life. And that's just the kind of stuff you'd start to think if you actually go through this kind of process. If you're actually trying to destroy this edifice that you feel possesses you. Yes? Hello? Thank you. Whether he's writing about the control of a dealer over a junkie, a lover over another, a doctor over a patient, the government over its citizens. about control. Perhaps having lost control. Yes. Hello. Even to the point that he's you know, drunkenly shooting his wife. It, it occurs to him the importance of control and how it's everywhere. It became something not just to think about or talk about, but something to do. And this compulsively needing to write, to communicate, and collaborator is, is interesting because he's admitting he doesn't have control over it. He has to do it. And yet I think it's a way to get control. To this possession he thinks he has. And he ends up writing about control situations and, and attacking how control is used. Controlling the powerless. How words can control people and how images can control people. And then he plays with word order and he plays with images and he plays with editing movies and, and, and mixing the order thing of things up. He's out of control. He plays with being out of control. He's seduced by things that make him out of control and then he fights control and devises experiments to attack ways that the seeming order that's expected controls people. And leave your package in the subway at the rush hour or in a theater or political rally or revival meeting. In addition to what I see as a, a focus on the idea of control through Burroughs' work and his life is an understanding of a magical world that's just outside of normal perception um, and ways to get to it. There are techniques, there are uh, methods, there are technologies, and many of them involve the arts in a profound way, and I think that's not by mistake, that helps you to get to that magical world, for want of a better way of describing it, where symbols are alive. Symbols are alive now, we just take them as concrete. That's how they trick us, because we go, that's just a symbol, but it's affecting you on many levels. And when you break up that rigid way of looking at things, they can come alive and you can feel that they're doing. And I think you get on that level that they're working on in a more clear way, perceptively. Like you can perceive whether it's you know, I've heard it described as being between being awake and being asleep. It's like, it could be like lucid dreaming, but, you know, it's, it's that place in between where the symbols are alive and you're still consciously aware of what you're doing. How do you manipulate something subconscious consciously? Because that's where that magic is. And those are real technologies that are used all the time. 
One of the ideas in cutting up text is that it can reveal something that is there that you would have seen normally. Well, it comes from Brian Geis. And essentially, it's taking writing, cutting it up, and randomly talk for unconditional peace talks and emphasize the weather. Creating other sentences. And that would almost seem the antithesis of control, right? It's ironic that a technique for gaining control over the word order and the seeming seeming existence of things that are in an order is to randomly make them disordered and then create another order out of it. In his role as German, but it shows doctor, the preeminence in the process of an editor magician, who then takes what has randomly seemingly, that's the beautiful too, randomly formed and edits it as a new thing. Scrambling the word order, attacking the current order. Credited with the ability to transport human beings to the realm of consciousness where telepathy and clairvoyance are commonplace. I guess it was called the word horde when he was in Tangiers and he was uh, a mess, but cr uh, creatively, compulsively drug fueled. His whole body is a pulsating hum of energy but violently creating all of this, these words and, and cutting them up and, and trying to create a chaos out of which a different order could come out of is what I would think was, whether he was conscious of it or not. He has been seen as a prince. Eventually, with the help of friends, a they help him put it a dog. into forms that could be books. And actually, he gets, a, I guess, about three books out of a it. The first one being Naked Lunch. And of course, it's very controversial, and some people say it's obscene, and all of this. But the themes of control are all through the book, and it's cut up. It makes the reader aware of what's being said. It's not a spectacle. It's not. It's not just a, uh, a shocking book with shocking things in it. The, the very form is shocking. The very form makes you have to perceive it differently than a standard linear telling of the story. It makes you even question if what is the story? And that's the freeing part of it. He saw synchronicities and everything. The whole idea of a synchronicity uh, First, a layer of air. in a magical universe, then a layer of fire. there would be, uh, if, if, you, if you see I am that I am. things being a coincidence, I am that I. well that means it has no meaning, am I? you know, it's just something that happened. And it was God I am. who controlled the world machine. But a magical view, that, I am. that there are underlying things that are hidden, yeah. that make manifest the visible. Things are going to manifest. He leads my soul to the other side of human beings. But it's not am I? clear. But I am, I am. The causal connection. But am I, I am. It may seem random and it may seem but I am. coincidental. Am I? But at that moment, that something coincidental and surprising happens. But I am. That has some kind of meaning. I am, I am. Some kind of resonance. But am I? Has some kind of am I? truth in it. We have been looking all over the place for human beings. It seems uncanny then you're approaching a synchronicity. You're approaching something that seems like it shouldn't be connected, but is. You just don't see the connection. The idea of something bad happens, something is attacking you. Something good happens, it was meant to happen. Look at these two demons talking the fire so energetically. It's not coincidental to someone who sees a magical underlying universe to everything. The unconscious imitated. It means something. He uh, did a lot of what I would call ritual work with guys. Does it seem to be persisting? Good, good. Thank you. And the fact that it involves. Yes, hello. Yes, hello. Yes, hello. Yes. And the fact, and the fact that uh, a lot of the work that he was doing with guys. Hello. Yes, hello. Involves hello. A recording equipment.
photography or film or filmmaking Hello. doesn't make it less of a ritual. I think those are all occult activities. Hello. Yes. Hello. Yes. Occult ritual activities. I think their purpose was that. He's one of the bigger influences of chaos magic. And he was involved with the IOT, the Illuminates of Thanatos. Some have said that he wasn't really a member or they just made him an honorary member. Um, Hunger divides but the world, remember train? He is reported to have gone through an initiation that he uh, was in the ritual as an actual participant. Uh, when he died, he was buried with his uh, membership ring. April is the last electrician to tap on the plane. So that uh, the assertion is that he was a real ritualist. How involved he was with them for a long, you know, like as a real member for a long time, it's hard to say. Yeah, yeah. hello, hello. But yes. his influence hello. on hello. chaos magic can't be denied. So hello, yeah, yeah, hello. hello. Yeah. A lot of chaos magicians would look at some of what he was doing and see it as yeah, yeah. precursors yeah. to what they're doing, the work that they're doing. Hello. Yeah. Well, chaos magic is um, look at that challenging the power of chaos. Good. Uh, look at that. In contrast to <laughs> a more focused technology. I'm the team to you now. There's a free, uh, a freewheeling aspect to chaos magic. Hello. Yes. So that's part of the energy. That's the creation, the destruction, Hello. creation, yes. vortex, churning thing that can happen. As opposed to a standard Western ceremonial yes. invocation, evocation. This is the Mayan caper. Very, uh, ripping film play. Like. A very orderly. Miserable collaborator. Technology. Yeah, so it's a, it's a less Hello. orderly yeah. technology. Yes. But it's in that Thank you. disorder. Yes. That things happen. It's just an old It's pretty chaotic to cut Hello. up your text. Yes. Hello. Hello. And make new sentences out of it. And that's the power of it. Yes. How does it seem yes. to you now? Hello. That's the uh, Hello. Uh, the obvious opposite of just Hello. writing a sentence and agonizing how, how you want your sentences to be formed. Yes. And uh, telling your story in a very narrative way and it's very focused. Yes. Um, it has a direction. Well, it's very chaotic, it's very disorderly to then take that Hello. after you Thank constructed sentences Hello. and cut them all up and make new sentences out of them. Yes. Good. Imagine taking off at the that in trying to create something that's more uh, like, uh, disorderly and uh, it's like a tornado, a vortex. There's energy Hello. churning out of a chaos, uh, out of a disordered process. And cursed day is There's a power in that too. There's a unexpected demo. Surprising Hello. number of things that can happen Hello. that Orgasm knife in the heart. can't ever be predicted yes. and can never be replicated. Is this machine recording? Again, Hello. Not necessarily in the same way. Hello. That's very different than a scientific um, Good. Yes. Hello. Illuminism, Thank you. Aleister Crowley. Uh, I'm going to write down a, a set experiment and then try to repeat it, a repeatable experiment. Terry gives inside the part. The very nature of chaos is that it's not orderly, but out of chaos comes order, you know. There's a. Uh, the only thing that can be done chemically can be done in other ways. I don't know that the goal is disorder. Very shadow. Just the mechanism is disorder. Yes. Trying to use the power of chaos. Yes. And my cat's about to knock over your drink. Please don't do that. <laughs> it was like he was wrestling with a cat. You can't control a cat. And he loved cats. But, you know, he... Blue heavy metal people. It just seems fundamental to everything he was doing.